Canto 28 Who ever could, e'en with untrammeled words, tell of the blood and of the wounds in full which now I saw by many times narrating? Each tongue would for a certainty fall short by reason of our speech and memory that have small room to comprehend so much. If were again assembled all the people which formerly upon the fateful land of Puglia were lamenting for their blood shed by the Romans and the lingering war that of the rings made such illustrious spoils as Livy has recorded, who heirs not, with those who felt the agony of blows by making counterstand to Robert Guiscard and all the rest, whose bones are gathered still at Keperano, where a renegade was each Apulian, and at Tagliacozzo, where without arms the old Alardo conquered, and one his limb transpierced, and one lopped off should show, it would be nothing to compare with the disgusting mode of the ninth Bolgia. A cask by losing centerpiece or cant was never shattered so, as I saw one rent from the chin to where one breaketh wind. Between his legs were hanging down his entrails. His heart was visible, and the dismal sack that maketh excrement of what is eaten. While I was all absorbed in seeing him, he looked at me, and opened with his hands his bosom, saying, See now how I rend me, how mutilated still is Mahomet. In front of me doth Ali weeping go, cleft in the face from forelock unto chin, and all the others whom thou here beholdest, disseminators of scandal and of schism, while living were, and therefore are cleft thus. A devil is behind here, who doth cleave us thus cruelly unto the falchion's edge, putting again each one of all in this ream, when we have gone around the doleful road. By reason that our wounds are closed again, ere any one in front of him repass. But who art thou that musest on the crag, perchance to postpone going to the pain that is adjudged upon thine accusations? Nor death hath reached him yet, nor guilt doth bring him, my master made reply, to be tormented, but to procure him full experience, me who am dead, behooves it to conduct him down here through hell, from circle unto circle, and this is true as that I speak to thee. More than a hundred were there when they heard him, who in the moat stood still to look at me through wonderment oblivious of their torture. Now say to Fraldocina then, to arm him, thou who perhaps wilt shortly see the sun, if soon he wish not here to follow me, so with provisions, that no stress of snow may give victory to the Novarese, which otherwise to gain would not be easy. After one foot to go away he lifted, this word did Mohammed say unto me, then to depart upon the ground he stretched it. Another one, who had his throat pierced through, and nose cut off close underneath the brows, and had no longer but a single ear, staying to look in wonder with the others, before the others did his gullet open, which outwardly was red in every part, and said, O thou, whom guilt doth not condemn, and whom I once saw up in Latian land, unless too great similitude deceive me, call to remembrance Pierre de Medicina, 
If e'er thou see again the lovely plain that from Vercelli slopes to Marcabo, and make it known to the best two of Fano, to Messer Guido and Angelo Lello, likewise, that if foreseeing here be not in vain, cast over from their vessel shall they be, and drowned near unto the Catalica by the betrayal of a tyrant fell. Between the isles of Cyprus and Majorca, Neptune ne'er beheld so great a crime, neither of pirates nor argolic people. That traitor, who sees only with one eye and holds the land which someone here with me would fain be fasting from the vision of, will make them come unto a parley with him. Then will do so, that to Fokara's wind they will not stand in need of vow or prayer. And I to him, Show to me, and declare, if thou wouldst have me bear up news of thee, who is this person of the bitter vision? Then did he lay his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions, and his mouth oaked, crying, This is he, and he speaks not. This one being banished, every doubt submerged in Caesar by affirming the forearmed always with detriment allowed delay. Oh, how bewildered unto me appeared, with tongue asunder in his windpipe slit, Curio, who in speaking was so bold. And one who both his hands dissevered had, the stumps uplifting through the murky air so that the blood made horrible his face, cried out, Thou shalt remember Mosca also, who said, Alas, a thing done has an end, which was an ill seed for the Tuscan people. And death unto thy race, I thereto added, whence he, accumulating woe on woe, departed, like a person sad and crazed. But I remained to look upon the crowd, and saw a thing which I should be afraid without some further proof even to recount, if it were not that conscience reassures me, that good companion which emboldens man beneath the hauberk of its feeling pure. I truly saw and still I seem to see it, a trunk without a head, walk in like manner, as walked the others of the mournful herd. And by the hair it held the head dissevered, hung from the hand in fashion of a lantern, and that upon us gazed and said, O oh, me! It of itself made to itself a lamp and they were two in one, and one in two. How that can be, he knows who so ordains it. When it was come close to the bridge's foot, it lifted high its arm with all the head, to bring more closely unto us its words, which were, Behold now the sore penalty, thou who dost breathing go the dead beholding, Behold, if any be as great as this. And so that thou may carry news of me, know that Bertram de Bourne am I, the same who gave the young king the evil comfort. I made the father and the son rebellious. Achitophel not more with Absalom, and David did with his accursed goadings. Because I parted persons so united, parted do I now bear my brain, alas, from its beginning, which is in this trunk. Thus is observed in me the counterpoise. Canto 29 The many people 
and the diver's wounds these eyes of mine had so inebriated that they were wishful to stand still and weep. But said Virgilus, What dost thou still gaze at? Why is thy sight still riveted down there among the mournful, mutilated shades? Thou hast not done so at the other bulgia. Consider, if to count them thou believest, that two and twenty miles the valley winds, and now the moon is underneath our feet. Henceforth the time allotted us is brief, and more is to be seen than what thou seest. If thou hadst, I made answer thereupon, attended to the cause for which I looked, Perhaps a longer stay thou wouldst have pardoned. Meanwhile my guide departed, and behind him I went, already making my reply, and superadding, In that cavern where I held mine eyes with such attention fixed, I think a spirit of my blood laments the sin which down below there costs so much. Then, said the master, be no longer broken, thy thought from this time forward upon him. Attend elsewhere, and there let him remain. For him I saw below the little bridge, pointing at thee, and threatening with his finger fiercely, and heard him called Gary de Bello. So wholly at that time wast thou impeded by him so formally held Altaforte, thou didst not look that way. So he departed. Oh, my conductor, his own violent death, which is not yet avenged for him, I said, by any who is sharer in the shame, made him disdainful. Whence he went away, as I imagine, without speaking to me, and thereby made me pity him the more. Thus did we speak as far as the first place upon the crag, which the next valley shows down to the bottom, if there were more light. When we were down now, right over the last cloister of Malabolgia, so that its lay brothers could manifest themselves unto our sight, divers lamentings pierced me through and through, which with compassion had their arrows barbed, whereat mine ears I covered with my hand. What pain would be if from the hospitals of Valdichiana, twixt July and September, of Maremma and Sardinia, all the diseases in one moat were gathered. Such was it here, and such a stench came from it as from putrescent limbs is wont to issue. We had descended on the farthest bank from the long crag, upon the left hand still, and then more vivid was my power of sight down towards the bottom, where the ministress of the high lord, justice infallible, punishes forgers, which she here records. I do not think a sadder sight to see was in Againa, the whole people sick, when was the air so full of pestilence, the animals down to the little worm all fell, and afterwards the ancient people, according as the poets have affirmed, were from the seed of ants restored again. Then was it to behold that dark valley of spirits languishing in divers' heaps. This on the belly, that upon the back one of the other lay, and others crawling shifted themselves along the dismal road. We, step by step, went onward without speech, gazing upon and listening to the sick who had not strength enough to lift their bodies. I saw two sitting leaned against each other, as leans in heating platter against platter, from head to foot bespotted o'er with scabs. And never saw I plied a currycomb by stable boy for whom his master waits, or him who keeps awake unwillingly 
as every one was plying fast the bite of nails upon himself for the great rage of itching which no other sucker had. And the nails downward with them dragged the scab in fashion as a knife the scales of bream or any other fish that has them largest. O oh, thou that with thy fingers dost dismail me, began my leader unto one of them, and makest of them pincers now and then, tell me if any lation is with those who are herein, so may thy nails suffice thee to all eternity unto this work. Lations are we, whom thou so wasted seest, both of us here, one weeping made reply, but who art thou that questionest about us? And said the guide, One am I who descends down with this living man from cliff to cliff, and I intend to show hell unto him. Then broken was their mutual support, and trembling each one turned himself to me with others who had heard him by rebound. Holy to me, did the good master gather, saying, Say unto them whatever thou wishest. And I began, since he would have it so. So may your memory not steal away in the first world from out the minds of men, but so may survive it neath many suns. Say to me who ye are, and of what people. Let not your foul and loathsome punishment be make you afraid to show yourselves to me. I of Arezzo was, one made reply, and Albert of Siena had me burned, but what I died for does not bring me here. Tis true, I said to him, speaking in jest, that I could rise by flight into the air, and he who had conceit but little wit would have me show to him the art, and only because no Daedalus I made him, made me be burned by one who held him as his son. But unto the last Bolgia of the ten, for alchemy, which in the world I practiced, Minos, who cannot err, has me condemned. And to the poet said I, Now was ever so vain a people as the Sienese, not for certainly the French by far. Whereat the other leper, who had heard me, replied unto my speech, taking out Stricca, who knew the art of moderate expenses, and Niccolo, who the luxurious use of cloves discovered earliest of all within that garden where such seed takes root, and taking out the band, among whom squandered Caccia di Aschi and his vineyards and vast woods, and where his wit the abligliato proffered, but that thou know who thus doth second thee against the Sienese makes sharp thine eye towards me, so that my face well answer thee. And thou shalt see I am Capoccio's shade, who meddles falsified by alchemy. Thou must remember, if well I descry thee, how I a skillful ape of nature was. Canto 30 T'was at the time when Juno was enraged for Semele against the Theban blood, as she already more than once had shown, so reft of reason Athamas became, that seeing his own wife with children twain walking encumbered upon either hand, he cried, Spread out the nets, that I may take the lioness and her whelps upon the passage, and then extended his unpitying claws, seizing the first who had the name Laertes, whirled him round and dashed him on a rock, and she, with the other burthen, drowned herself. And at the time when fortune downward hurled the Trojans' arrogance, that all things dared, so that the king was with his kingdom crushed, Hecuba, sad, disconsolate, and captive, 
when lifeless she beheld Polyxena, and of her Polydorus on the shore, of ocean was the dolorous one aware. Out of her senses, like a dog, she barked, so much the anguish had her mind distorted. But not of Thebes, the Furies, nor the Trojan, were ever seen in any one so cruel and goading beasts, and much more human members, as I beheld two shadows, pale and naked, who, biting in the manner, ran along that a boar does, when from the sty turned loose. One to Capoccio came, and by the nape seized with its teeth his neck, so that in dragging it made his belly grate the solid bottom. And the Arentine, who trembling had remained, said to me, That mad sprite is Gianni Skiki, and raving goes thus harrying other people. Oh, I said to him, so may not the other set teeth on thee, let it not weary thee to tell us who it is, ere it dart hence. And he to me, that is the ancient ghost of the nefarious Mira, who became beyond all rightful love her father's lover. She came to sin with him after this manner, by counterfeiting of another's form, as he who goeth yonder undertook, that he may gain the lady of the herd to counterfeit in himself Buoso Donati, making a will and giving it due form. And after the two maniacs had passed, on whom I held my eye, I turned it back to look upon the other evil-born. I saw one made in fashion of a lute, if he had only had the groin cut off just at the point at which a man is forked. The heavy dropsy that so disproportions the limbs with humors which it ill concocts that the face corresponds not to the belly compelled him so to hold his lips apart as does the hectic, who because of thirst one towards the chin, the other upward turns. O oh, ye who without any torment are, and why I know not in the world of woe, he said to us, behold, and be attentive unto the misery of Master Adam. I had while living much of what I wished, and now, alas, a drop of water crave. The rivulets that from the verdant hills of Cassentin descend down into Arno, making their channels to be cold and moist, ever before me stand, and not in vain, for far more doth their image dry me up than the disease which strips my face of flesh. The rigid justice that chastises me draweth occasion from the place in which I sinned to put the more my sighs in flight. There is Romana, where I counterfeited the currency imprinted with the Baptist, for which I left my body burned above. But if I here could see this tristful soul of Guido, or Alessandro, or their brother, for Branda's fount, I would not give the sight. One is within already, if the raving shades that are going round about speak truth. But what avails it me, whose limbs are tied? If I were only still so light, that in a hundred years I could advance one inch, I had already started on the way, seeking him out among this squalid folk, although the circuit be eleven miles, and be not less than half a mile across. For them am I in such a family. They did induce me into coining florins, which had three carats of impurity. And I to him, Who are the two poor wretches that smoke like unto a wet hand in winter, lying there close upon thy right-hand confines. I found them here, replied he, when I reigned into this chasm, and since they have not turned, nor do I think they will for evermore. 
One, the false woman is, who accused Joseph. The other, the false Sinon, Greek of Troy. From acute fever they send forth such reek. And one of them, who felt himself annoyed at being, peradventure, named so darkly, smote with the fist upon his hardened paunch. It gave a sound, as if it were a drum, and Master Adam smote him in the face with arm that did not seem to be less hard, saying to him, Although be taken from me all motion, for my limbs that heavy are, I have an arm unfettered for such need. Whereat he the answer made, When thou didst go unto the fire, thou hadst it not so ready, but hadst it so and more when thou wast coining. The dropsical. Thou sayest true in that, but thou wast not so true a witness there where thou wast questioned of the truth at Troy. If I spake false, thou falsifiedst the coin, said Sinon, and for one fault I am here, and thou for more than any other demon. Remember, perjurer, about the horse, he made reply, who had the swollen belly, and rueful be it thee, the whole world knows it. Rufal to thee the thirst be wherewith cracks thy tongue, the Greek said, and the putrid water that hedges so thy paunch before thine eyes. Then the false coiner, so is gaping wide thy mouth for speaking evil, as tis wont, because if I have thirst and humour stuff me, thou hast the burning and the head that aches, and to lick up the mirror of Narcissus thou wouldst not want words many to invite thee. In listening to them I was wholly fixed, when said the master to me, Now just look, for little wants it that I quarrel with thee. When him I heard in anger speak to me, I turned me round towards him with such shame that still it eddies through my memory. And as he is who dreams of his own harm, who dreaming wishes it may be a dream, so that he craves what is, as if it were not, such I became, not having power to speak, for to excuse myself I wished, and still excused myself, and did not think I did it. Less shame doth wash away a greater fault, the master said, than this of thine has been. Therefore thyself disburden of all sadness, and make account that I am I beside thee, if e'er it come to pass that fortune bring thee where there are people in like dispute. For a base wish it is to wish to hear it. Canto 31 One and the self-same tongue first wounded me, so that it tinged the one cheek and the other, and then held out to me the medicine. Thus do I hear that once Achilles' spear, his and his father's, used to be the cause first of a sad and then a gracious boon. We turned our backs upon the wretched valley, upon the bank that girds it round about, going across it without any speech. There it was less than night and less than day, so that my sight went little in advance, but I could hear the blare of a loud horn, so loud it would have made each thunder faint, which, counter to it following its way, mine eyes directed wholly to one place. After the dolorous discomfiture when Charlemagne the holy emprise lost, so terribly Orlando sounded not. Short while my head turned thitherward, I held when many lofty towers I seemed to see, whereat I, Master, say, what town is this? 
and he to me. Because thou peerest forth athwart the darkness at too great a distance, it happens that thou errorest in thy fancy. Well shalt thou see, if thou arrivest there, how much the sense deceives itself by distance. Therefore a little faster spur thee on. Then tenderly he took me by the hand and said, Before we farther have advanced, that the reality may seem to thee less strange, know that these are not towers, but giants. And they are in the well around the bank, from navel downward, one and all of them. As when the fog is vanishing away, little by little doth the sight refigure whatever the mist that crowds the air conceals, so, piercing through the dense and darksome air, more and more near approaching toward the verge, my error fled, and fear came over me. Because, as on its circular parapets, Monte Regioni crowns itself with towers, E'en thus the margin which surrounds the well with one half of their bodies turreted the horrible giants whom Jove menaces e'en now from out the heavens when he thunders. And I, of one, already saw the face, shoulders, and breast, and great part of the belly, and down along his sides both of the arms. Certainly nature, when she left the making of animals like these, did well indeed by taking such executors from Mars. And if of elephants and whales she doth not repent her, whosoe'er looked subtly more just and more discreet will hold her for it. For where the argument of intellect is added unto evil will and power, no rampart can the people make against it. His face appeared to me as long and large, as is at Rome the pinecone of St. Peter's, and in proportion were the other bones, so that the margin which an apron was down from the middle showed so much of him above it that to reach up to his hair three Frieslanders in vain had vaunted them, for I beheld thirty great palms of him down from the place where man his mantle buckles. Raphael, me, Amek, Ibazi, Almi, began to clamor the ferocious mouth, to which were not befitting sweeter psalms. And unto him, my guide, soul idiotic, keep to thy horn, invent thyself with that, when wrath or other passion touches thee. Search round thy neck, and thou wilt find the belt which keeps it fastened, O bewildered soul, and see it where it bars thy mighty breast. Then said to me, He doth himself accuse. This one is Nimrod, by whose evil thought one language in the world is not still used. Here let us leave him and not speak in vain, for even such to him is every language as his to others, which to none is known. Therefore a longer journey did we make, turned to the left, and a crossbow shot oft, we found another far more fierce and large. In binding him, who might the master be, I cannot say, but he had pinioned close behind the right arm, and in front the other with chains that held him so begirt about from the neck down that on the part uncovered it wound itself as far as the fifth gyre. This proud one wished to make an experiment of his own power against the supreme Jove, my leader said, whence he has such a guerdon. Ephialtes was his name. He showed great prowess. What time the giants terrified the gods, the arms he wielded never more he moves. And I to him, If possible, I should wish that of the measureless Briarius these eyes of mine might have experience. Once he replied, Thou shalt behold Antaeus, 
close by here, who can speak and is unbound, who at the bottom of all crime shall place us. Much farther yon is he whom thou wouldst see, and he is bound and fashioned like to this one, save that he seems in aspect more ferocious. There never was an earthquake of such might that it could shake a tower so violently as Ephialtes sh suddenly shook himself. Then was I more afraid of death than ever, for nothing more was needful than the fear if I had not beheld the manacles. Then we proceeded farther in advance, and to Antaeus came, who full five ells without the head forth issued from the cavern. O thou, who in the valley fortunate, which Scipio the heir of glory made, when Hannibal turned back with all his hosts, once broughtst a thousand lions for thy prey, and who hadst thou been at the mighty war among thy brothers, some it seems still think the sons of earth the victory would have gained. Place us below, nor be disdainful of it. There where the cold doth lock Cocytus up. Make us not go to Titus, nor Typhus. This one can give of that which here is longed for. Therefore stoop down, and do not curl thy lip. Still in the world can he restore thy fame, because he lives, and still expects long life, if to itself grace call him not untimely. So said the master, and in haste the other his hands extended and took up my guide, hands whose great pressure Hercules once felt. Virgilus, when he felt himself embraced, said unto me, Draw nigh that I may take thee. Then of himself and me one bundle made. As seems the carisenda to behold beneath the leaning side, when it goes a cloud above it, so that opposite it hangs, such did Antaeus seem to me, who stood watching to see him stoop, and then it was I could have wished to go some other way. But, lightly in the abyss, which swallows up Judas with Lucifer, he put us down. Nor thus bowed downward made he there delay, but, as a mast does in a ship, a prose.